Hey, in this video, I'm going to be showing you 10 of my favorite tennis warm-up games and ranking them from best to worst. Now, before getting into the rankings list, let me explain where this warm-up game would sit in your training session. What I usually do with my players is go through a pulse raising activity. This could be something like jogging or skipping before getting into some dynamic stretches to make sure that the body is prepared to get into the session. After this, I'll do a warm-up activity that involves a ball, and that is where these warm-up games come into play. Now, when I go through these 10 warm-up activities, I'm going to be ranking them from A to D, depending on a very simple criteria of four areas. Number one is its suitability to all levels of tennis player. If the warm-up can be achieved by every single level of tennis player, then it will score an A. However, if it's only suitable for advanced players or beginner players, for example, then it might score a D. The second criteria is, does it physically warm you up specifically for tennis? The warm-up should look and feel like tennis. If you're moving your body like a tennis player, then this is a bonus as it's going to get you more prepared for your tennis session. The third criteria is, does it engage your brain? And to figure this out is very simple. Does it encourage you to make decisions as you're playing the game? The more decisions you have to make, the more it engages your brain, so the better the warm up. And finally, is it fun and competitive? If it is, it's gonna set you up for a great session ahead. At the end of the video, once I've rated all 10 warm ups from A to D, I'm gonna show you through the rankings list showing you my favorite warm up and my least favorite warm up from these 10. As a quick disclaimer before I rate and rank the 10 warm ups, I want it to be clear that I'm a big fan of all 10 of these warm ups in certain situations. There'll be some moments where I'm working with a tennis player and they require something at a lower intensity, and there might be other moments where I'm warming up a player ready for a big match and I want to take their mind off of tennis. And so that warm-up might not look like tennis at all. So take my ratings and rankings with a pinch of salt and hopefully at the end of this video you'll at least have some new warm-up ideas. Let's see them. So kicking things off we're gonna start with probably the most widely used tennis warm-up of all time and it's service box rallies. Loads and loads of coaches and players all over the world use this warm-up as it's a good way to find your timing and rhythm and build into the session very gradually. Players start off hitting in the service boxes, hitting forehands and backhands and slowly move their way back to the baseline. It's pretty accessible for all levels of tennis player. It does look and feel like tennis as you're hitting forehands and backhands. However, you're not really moving in different directions. You're pretty static when hitting in the service boxes. The only decisions that you have to make are whether to hit a forehand or a backhand. So it doesn't really engage your brain. And is it fun and competitive? No. To be honest, I think that coaches and players use this warm up far too often. And I understand why, because in lots of situations, you just want a very chilled, relaxed warm up. But I'm pretty sure that you'll agree that some of these next warm ups are far more beneficial for more holistic approach to warming up for your tennis session. I give this a C rating. However, because I think it's so overused, I'm actually gonna downgrade it to a D. The next warm-up game is called a catch match. This actually doesn't involve a tennis racket. What you're going to do is choose a court size, whether that's one service box each, two service boxes each, or the entire court. And the aim of the game is to try to win the point with throwing. Now, the only rule is you're not allowed to run whilst you've got the ball in your hand. So wherever you catch the ball from, you've got to send it back over the net before recovering for the next ball. Now, although you're not hitting forehands and backhands and you don't have a racket in your hand, I feel that this looks and feels more like tennis than a service box rally. As you're moving in all directions, you're accelerating, stopping, but what's more important is it really engages your brain is you have to think tactically about where you're going to send the ball to, how you're going to send the ball and where you're going to recover to. This is also even more accessible to beginners than other exercises that have a racket as most people can throw and catch. But equally, I've done this with players on the future circuit and it gets super competitive. So I'm gonna give this warm up a B rating and the only reason I haven't given it an A is because you don't have a racket in your hand. The next warm up is football tennis and you see tons of players on the pro tour doing this to warm up. This is pretty similar to a catch match. The aim of the game is to try to win the point, but this time you're gonna be using your foot and you're allowed two touches and two bounces before the ball travels back over the net. Just like a catch match, you've gotta be tactical. You've gotta think about where you're sending the ball to and where you're recovering to. 
You're moving around the court like a tennis player, moving in all directions, tracking and anticipating that oncoming ball. But what's even more vital in this one is giving yourself good spacing. But just like a catch match, you don't have a racket in your hand. And the real challenge for this one is it's not as accessible for everybody. As unless you've got incredible coordination or you play football already, it's quite a tough exercise to achieve. So I'm gonna give football tennis a rating of C. Next up, we've got touch. Now, this game is super competitive. Your aim is to play the point out in the service boxes, starting with the ball resting on top of the net. The only rule in this game is you're not allowed to hit the ball downwards, hence the name touch. You've got to win the point by using your touch, feel and control. This has everything that the catch match has, except now you've got a racket in your hand, so it looks and feels a lot more like tennis. This one is definitely suitable for all levels of tennis player. But naturally, the more advanced you are, the more competitive this game gets. It warms you up physically and mentally as you're moving in all directions, you're reading and judging the oncoming ball and thinking tactically about where you're going to put the ball. When I do this exercise with my players, it gets them buzzing before they get on court. So I'm going to rate this warm up an A. Next up, we've got the volley game, which is very similar to a game of touch. However, you're not allowed to let the ball touch the floor. Now, you can do this game in just one service box each to start with, and you can progress onto using all four service boxes if you're really athletic. Instead of starting with the ball resting on top of the net, you start with an underarm feed and you play the point out volley to volley. Again, you're not able to hit the ball downwards. You can only hit upwards, and your aim is to try to get the ball to bounce in your opponent's box. I absolutely love this warm up as you really have to be tactical here. My advice is to start close to the net as drop shots are going to catch you out. However, be careful as your opponent can chip the ball over your head into the service box. Just like touch, I'm going to rate this warm up an A purely because it covers all four of the criteria pretty well. But I probably would say that it's not quite as easy as touch as taking the bounce out of the equation does give you less time to react. But I have seen beginners do this exercise and they find it great fun. Next up, we've got the foam ball warm up, and this exercise is amazing for all levels. As for beginners, it slows the ball down and gives them much more time to react and move to the oncoming ball. But I've even seen it done at pro level, as it's a really nice, relaxing way to get a feel for your strokes. But just like service box rallies, it doesn't get you moving and making decisions like some of the other warm ups, and it's not competitive unless you play touch or the volley game with it. So I'm gonna rate it a C. However, it is still a really good warm up and I do use it with my players from time to time. Next up is another variation of service box rallies and it's Sabre rallies. Now, you might have seen me make a review of the Sabre before. It's basically a sweet spot trainer. This is a racket that has a 37 square inch head. So it's excellent for getting you dialed in and focused on that oncoming ball. It does everything that service box rallies does and foam ball rallies do. However, with the added challenge of using the smaller racket head, it really heightens your focus and gets you moving your feet slightly more effectively. I'd rate this one a B as it really heightens your focus. However, it's not easy to do. So I would say that for beginners and improvers, it might not be so fun. So I'm gonna put it in the C category. Next up, we've got the Stan Vavrinka warm-up. Now, I first saw this warm-up done with a friend of mine, Dario Novak, who is Stan Vavrinka's fitness coach. And he has tons of these fun warm-ups, so I do suggest you head over to his Instagram and give him a follow. But this game is super fun, super competitive, gets you moving around the court like a tennis player, and gets you making decisions, but it's definitely not easy. You need three balls the size of footballs or volleyballs. Each player has one, and you use the ball that's in your hand to bump the other ball over the net. You tap it up once before sending it over the net and you play the point out. Now there are a few variations of this warm up, but what I love about it is it's far enough from tennis to take your mind off of the sport, especially if you're going into a big match, but it's warming up all of your body parts and your decisions that you would be using for tennis. But even though you don't have a racket in your hand and it's a pretty tough exercise to execute, I'm gonna give it a B as I love how competitive and fun this warm up is. Next, we've got the Djokovic game. This game's got lots of different names, but it's been made famous by Novak Djokovic as there was a viral video that went around of him doing an incredible point. Just like the Vavrinka game, it's incredible fun, super competitive, 
test your decisions, the movements look and feel like tennis. However, it's pretty tough to execute and does take some time to get used to. In some ways, it's better than the Vavrinka warm-up as you've got a racket in your hand, but in other ways, it's so unrealistic to tennis as you're hitting the ball down into the floor. I'm gonna score this game a B just because it's incredibly fun and competitive like the Vavrinka game. But I would probably suggest that actually you could use this one at the end of a session as a finisher as it really burns the legs. And the final warm-up activity is a tap match. Now this, you don't even need a tennis net for. You do it in one service box. Your aim is to tap the ball upwards before your partner taps the next ball. You have to let the ball bounce and your aim is to make your opponent miss or make them do a double bounce. Now this one is super universal and all levels of player can do it. It's a really good one for warming up your legs as you have to stay nice and low, but it's not super realistic to tennis as you're not using any rotations for forehands and backhands and you're only tapping the ball upwards. It's super competitive and surprisingly fun, but because you're not really getting a feel for sending the ball over the net, I'm gonna rate it a C. So as I mentioned on the start, they were only my opinions and I actually love all of the warm-ups for certain situations. Here is my rankings list. And as you can see, right at the top of the list, we've got touch. This game is so versatile and can be used for pretty much any level of tennis player to create a really fun and engaging warm-up that gets your body pumping. And all the way down at the bottom, we've got standard service box rallies. Now that's not to say that you should never do it. It's still a really good way to slowly find your rhythm into the session. But if you're looking for something that's really gonna engage your brain and get you moving like a tennis player, then it's probably better to choose one of these higher up exercises. So I hope you enjoyed that video and if anything, at least you got some new warm-up ideas. I'm actually planning to do more of these rankings videos on other parts of tennis. So let me know in the comments below if there's anything in the world of tennis that you want me to make a rankings video on, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.